If you're a human living on planet Earth, you're probably familiar with the story of the gunfight at the OK Corral. The classic Old West showdown often portrayed in Hollywood films by actors who look nothing like the real thing. Hollywood has taken a few liberties with the story of the OK Corral and what actually happened on that early afternoon, October 26th, 1881. At best, what you see in Hollywood films is only partially accurate. Case in point, there are no saguaros in Tombstone. Today's OK Corral actors definitely look the part, and they're not just actors, they know a great deal of history about what actually went down here. Today we're here in Tombstone at the OK Corral to separate the facts from the fiction. <laughs> Montgomery and Benson's OK Corral was one of several stables that served Tombstone in the 1880s. It had wagon sheds, stables, and stalls, and was two lots wide on Allen Street with a narrow entrance on Fremont Street. It has gained great notoriety due to countless books, publications, and movies about the gunfight between the Earp brothers, Doc Holliday, and the Clintons and McLowrys. This incident lasted for mere seconds and left three dead and three wounded. But the OK Corral was in business years after the gunfight. With the influx of automobiles used to climb, by 1907, deterioration caused the adobe structure in the annex to collapse, killing three horses. This deterioration continued, and by 1951, restoration efforts began. In 1958, the adobe building, 150 feet of stables, and wagon sheds were rebuilt using the original plans to restore it. The current complex contains the gunfight site as well as replicas of many of the original buildings. There are also a few museum-style exhibits in the OK Corral, which you won't see in this video, but be sure to check them out when you come here. The OK Corral still has a blacksmith, and this is Jesse, the blacksmith of the OK Corral, and he's going to show us how to make a bottle opener. stone on each and every one. Very nice. <laughs> These bottle openers and other handmade items are available for purchase if you want to take home a really cool souvenir. Not everybody in town was pleased with the outcome of the gunfight at the OK Corral. In fact, many believe that the McClowries and Billy Clanton were murdered in the streets of Tombstone. In fact, depending on who's telling you the story, it could be a little different. Clock, yo! One o'clock, next OK Corral gunfight of the day. Watch three law dogs and a lunger taking pot shots at some cowboys. That's right, y'all get your tickets for these double red doors. The highlights of the OK Corral are, of course, the gunfight site where the battle actually happened. And just a few feet away from there, you can witness a very good reenactment of the events of that day. We'll take a little bit of a look at the show here before we talk to the actors. Are you folks ready for a gunfight? Yeah. Are you ready for a killing? Yeah. You people lost it. You're <laughs> gonna be fine, friend. Just fine. He's gonna die. <laughs> Doc, there's something I need to talk to you about. Hello? It's I, Clanton. He's on the warpath, and this time he's gunning for you. If I, Clanton, comes my way, it becomes my business, Wyatt. And you and I both know I handle my business the proper way. Doc Holliday. I reckon he's going to go out in town and do what? Spread some more lies about me, Doc. I kind of do believe my Bethel told the truth about you. That kid is scarier than the rest of you, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you something about that sheriff. Uh, you see, he's a smart man because he leaves us cowboys alone. 
It sure is a lot of tough talk, Wyatt. You know, it really is just a shame that it's coming out of a dead man! You boys, you had your chance to run us out of this town, but this is our home! And we ain't leaving. Now you've got it. Lock your hands, boys! We're here for your guns! Oh, that's not what I want! I have no gun, why are you so stupid? Frank Flowers, dead. Tom Flowers, dead. 19 year old Billy Clinton, dead. That was it. So, more than the start. And that, folks, is our show. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> like to come on down to the set, get some pictures with the actors, we invite you to do so. This is as good as we're gonna look all day. <laughs> if you have any questions about the history of the town or anything you just saw, feel free to come on down and ask us. We are a lot more reliable than this Val Kilmer person I keep hearing about. <laughs> These guys put on a great show. I highly recommend it if you come to Tombstone. But after all the people leave here, we'll have a little chat about what the actors know about what happened here. By the way, how close were you to Frank McClowry when it all went down? He said mm -hmm. he reached out and touched him. It was point blank. For as far as cinema goes, that doesn't look as impressive or exciting. Right, the movie, they're like 30 feet apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that just looks better. Uh -huh. um, certainly, we have to uh, keep uh, a space between us for safety concessions. But they, right. in a movie, they, they could have shown it the right way. They could have had the snow on the ground and them at point blank range. Yeah. Even though it was cartridge uh, era, the uh, the bullets had black powder in them. So that added to the poor visibility yeah. when they started firing. Yeah. And in the movie, Ike runs into this building and then starts shooting out the window. Did that happen? What? No. Um, <laughs> after the gunfight, because the actual back entrance to the OK Corral would be where the current Marshall's parking lot is. Mm -hmm. So when Ike tucked tail and ran, he basically ran through the back entrance, out through the front entrance. And based off what I read uh, across the street, which is now like a parking lot, like Dexter Delivery, who was arrested about two hours after the gunfight, kind of in that general area. Yeah. So kind he, of like yeah. hanging out. Yeah. Um, there was Ike. He didn't have anything to do with the like after effect, like after effects for days. He said he wasn't even around this area. He refused to like come by this section of the street mm -hmm. for days afterwards, like during the whole trial process and everything. But also, I heard too that there was still bodies on the ground, like days afterwards. I heard, uh, and I believe it was Frank. Oh, Frank. I could be wrong, but Frank staggered across the street. Tom, uh, Tom, Tom excuse me, not Frank. <laughs> Tom staggered up uh, across the street, Fremont Street, le leaning backwards against the building, slumped down in a sitting position, and he was there for Basically, at least a we're day. Basically, uh, sco A schoolboy saw him. Uh, there propped up and reported it to somebody, but apparently, uh, for, for whatever reason, I think it's covered in snow. Uh, maybe that's why, maybe that's why, uh, covered in snow, but uh, he wasn't found until, uh, as you say, a day or two later, which is kind of creepy. Yeah, um, he was also when he was found, he had what is it, he had seven hundred dollars, like, and I mean, eighteen eighty one dollars, he had seven hundred dollars cash on him and almost $3,000 worth of bonds mm -hmm. also in his pockets. Cattle rustling pays. Yeah, yeah. from, mm -hmm. from a, a trade that he had been making earlier in the day with Ike, yeah. mm -hmm. with the butcher in town. Mm -hmm. Just so happened to be the same one who uh, watched stolen beef uh, from either Mexico. Ike get buffaloed or watched Tom get buffaloed. But the same butcher that he had made a deal with earlier watched, I think it was Tom. Get Tom, whipped, Tom got buffaloed yeah, by get, Wyatt. Get whipped by Wyatt outside the courthouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not far, not long before the gunfight. Yeah. And yeah. actually, it wasn't outside the courthouse because the courthouse wasn't built yet. Um, it was actually right here in the middle of 4th Street, across the street from about where Puny John's is. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 He, he was yeah. buffaloed there. 
And then that's pretty much what ignited later on. It was it was right after the hearing though uh -huh. for Ike when Ike was getting thrown out. Right. So so he called, but in that same hearing, wasn't that the part where Morgan has his little to do with Ike? He takes his gun out, give, tries to give it to him in the courtroom or something. I heard that he should say, "All right, you want to fight? Come on, let's do it." There's a lot. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot of different variations and if you look back in history everybody that claimed they witnessed the gunfight their stories were all different yeah one thing i did learn about um was at shufflin hall upstairs where the mason masons have their lodge the one side window that looks out onto fremont in this direction it's still the original glass the creepy part is there was actually two young men that witnessed the whole thing from that window I made the question is, well, why didn't they come forward and give their actual accounts? The answer I got back was they weren't supposed to be in the building. So basically it was to kind of protect their own tails. They just kept their mouth shut. Mm. But there were people that actually did witness it. But I think because of retaliation, just the time period, the not knowing, a lot of people just kind of kept their mouth shut. So, you know, I think the description that Wyatt gave is probably going to be one of the closest. Um, but even the paper that you can get from the epitaph of the whole trial kind of gives you an insight of, you know, probably the closest, honest, you know, yeah. account of what actually took place. There is, there is online, there's a library resource actually that you can find that has all of the original documents that they've resurfaced mm -hmm. from digging around and recovering them. But they have a they have a lot of original testimonies that were handwritten from the date the trial dates that mm -hmm. were I think Ike's testimony is intact. Johnny Behan's testimony is intact. Mm -hmm. There's Billy Claiborne's and a couple others mm -hmm. that are a little scattered. Um, but they still have remains of them. And if you read them all together, it paints an interesting picture of mm -hmm. some yeah. of the truths. Wyatt, Wyatt, in my, my understanding or belief, didn't have a whole lot to gain by lying or fabricating anything because they were wearing the badges. Uh, number two, Wyatt did draw a map of the exact spot where the gunfight happened and everything leading up to it happened. Um, once again, I don't see why, especially if there were witnesses, I don't see why he would uh, be motivated to uh, uh, spread falsehoods about what happened that day. I don't think he would have had anything to gain by that. There's, there's, yeah, because I know if you, if you look at a lot of the resources that are available, it's widely assumed and kind of stated at this point that Behan witnessed the gunfight from back of flies. No doubt. That he was yeah. there and he witnessed around the corner, kind of watched well, because all the he, So he wasn't in the building like in the movie? No. Right. no I didn't no, think so. He was standing outside <laughs> of the fact, to expand upon what I just said, I almost get the feeling, other than Virgil, because Virgil was a blue-collar stand-up lawman. Mm -hmm. He fully expected those cowboys to render their guns upon his command because Ordinance Number 9 was only a misdemeanor. It wasn't worth risk of risking getting killed for. I, I almost feel like Wyatt, maybe Morgan, and certainly Doc were almost kind of proud in kind of a macho way of what they did and what went down. I think they were almost like, that's why I don't really feel like they were hiding anything. You know, they were wearing yeah. the badges. And I think it was, as I said, kind of a macho thing. Like They asked yeah, for we it, right? To kick yeah. their rear ends, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's what happened. Yeah. You know, that's the feeling I get. It's, yeah. the, it's the, and there's a handful of eyewitnesses and earwitnesses to the effect of Morgan and Doc having this conversation leading up to the gunfight as they're walking down the alleyway, Correct. saying Morgan turns to Doc as Virgil and Wyatt are up in front, Morgan and Doc are trailing behind, and Morgan turns to Doc with the shotgun and says, give them both barrels to Doc replying, all right. And I've heard that too. Um, and then the, also there's plenty of the agreeable testimony that says Doc Holliday was one of the first people to kick back, back, he took a couple steps back towards the outside of the Harwood house into Fremont Street, waited kind of right next to Tom McClowry 
with a shotgun and then cocked the hammers back. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what ignited everyone to, whoa. Nobody knows who fired the first and... shot, but certainly Doc was itching My money's on Doc. <laughs> to mm -hmm. shoot somebody. And well, the fact that he clicked that 10 gauge shotgun, I'm sure the Cowboys thought this this SOB is going to kill us. Yeah, he's, yeah, it's just he's, got stupid. Yeah. He's going to do it legally because he's with the guys with the badges. Right. He was was not wearing a badge, but he was with the lawmen, and he probably felt <laughs> this is your day and it's coming because and I'm going to get away with it. And by God, he did. He was acquitted at the yeah. trial. So yeah. and there's a lot of the history will say that Tom and uh, Wyatt fired simultaneously. That's why they don't know who fired the first shot. Right. But Tom fired. You know, Wyatt fired. Why was actually aiming for Frank because Frank was a better gunman. Correct. And that story in and of itself is interesting. Yeah. Because recently I found out that really basically the only understanding of Frank McClary being any kind of good gunman oh, comes good. from yeah. a week before the gunfight. There was yeah. a there was an article put out in the nugget that Frank McClary walked into town and visited a few of the saloons wearing a brand new beaded buckskin coat that he had got from an Apache medicine man while they were raiding his house. They were circling his house out there in the Sulphur Springs Valley. Mm -hmm. He walks out loaded, just drunk, and grabs his rifle, props it up on his elbow, and just, bah, one shot, knocks the medicine man off his horse, walks out there, grabs his jacket, and pins it up on his front lawn for the next week for anybody to come by and see. And then he wore it into town a week before the gunfight and was bragging about it. Hmm. Hmm. And that's that's about the only account of Frank McClary be before good, good the gunfight gun at all. Which would explain why Wyatt would have aimed for Frank first. Sure. Because eliminate your biggest threat. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But to circle back, where that, that money that Tom had? No one knows. Good question. Yeah, no well, knows. you know, the, the, of course the Cowboys were, were well known to be going down to Mexico, stealing Mexican cattle it back here and selling it for a big profit and then taking them back mm -hmm. yep they double they would mm -hmm. double dip and take them back from the army or whoever they sold them to go back to the mexicans and say hey we found your cattle we'll get them right. for a price right here you go you here you go we'll turn your cattle for you selling mm -hmm. the same cow yeah and exactly. not to mention <laughs> reports of, of stages being held up and loot taken that way and well the modoc was that stage that came the through most here with the most highly yeah. held up stage was the Modoc line. Yeah, and, and the way it came through, it was like what, 20 passengers? I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's really not even that many when you think about it. But certainly, you know, a lot of those visitors had, had jewelry, they yeah. had cash, they had uh, silver, who knows? I mean. You also have to think too, it's a boom town. It's and, a boom town. And a yeah. western town, just in general. Yeah, the absolutely. lack of resources is very well, real in that time. Sure. So anything goes for high well, price when you have none. Absolutely. So I have came across this story here about the like the term for a shot of whiskey. Is it came from here? Yep. Because the height the, of the forty-five. It was shot. equal yeah. to a bullet. Well, because they wouldn't be able to, the miners wouldn't get any silver because they would put the silver ore out, but then the silver coin coming back would get robbed. Right. So they couldn't pay the miners, so the miners would turn in. For a shot of whiskey a shot and that's where and they would turn us in and then get a shot of whiskey back yeah and that's where at, they would say that the height of a 45 long cold yeah. you had set it on the bar and then this is the pour that you get of yeah. whiskey you get enough whiskey here it's a shot's worth Makes ended, sense. Up, ended up becoming about an ounce sure. when we weigh it out. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's what I heard. That, yeah, that, the story I've heard is that the shot a, of whiskey came from. Course, this it was about the street. price of a bullet too. Yeah, the price. That, yeah they would turn it in. It is, they were turning the bullet for the shot. Yeah, the cost of one round was equivalent to correct. Like the and by the way, back in those days, there was no automatic, so they weren't called long. Back then, it was just Colt forty five. You had a forty four Colt. You had a forty five Colt. I mean, Virgil wore a forty four Russian. Yeah. He had his, he had his, he had his special made apparently. Yeah. And, and interesting. Smith and enough, Weston. There yeah. was, out of the six people that were reported in the gunfight to have had guns, the four herbs and the two cowboys, Billy and Frank, there was only two guns ever recovered from that entire incident and documented, and that was Billy and Frank's gun. Yep. And they were documented to the serial numbers. They were recovered two Colt 45 wow. Frontier model, seven and a half inch barrel. Which, so, with which would make sense the by the uh, early but 1980s uh, nobody else Model P or, or Colt 45s, as I say, were, were readily available. The first five years after 1873, when they were first released, the Army was grabbing most of them up. So mm. it wasn't until about 1878 that the Model P was in abundant numbers to be had. And by the way, you know, the conversion era, most guys had conversions for that 
10 years between the early 70s and early 80s because the Model P's cost 15 to $20 brand new. You could get a brand new conversion from Colts for $5, five to $7. Mm -hmm. So there's no doubt in my mind, there might've been some Colt or, Rem uh, Colt or Remington conversions or open tops uh, besides the Model P's that were mm -hmm. found, single action armies that were found. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a really it's a really interesting thing, and it it really comes down to lack of evidence and lack of documentation. Right, yeah. is the reason why the gunfight happened the way that it happened. Yeah. Is there was no, for instance, even just the name, it, it, the, the gunfight at the OK Corral was just because of proximity. Yeah, right. um, and it proximity, just, and it rang better when it got to Hollywood. Sure. And that's what it is because you look, the lots right there. Yeah, the gunfight didn't happen. The back corral. the back entrance to the corral is over here. So you've got, look at that space. You got a mm -hmm. long alleyway mm -hmm. and most of a vacant lot. And um, it's interesting because uh, some folks right off the bat called it the fight on Fremont Street. Others like the Epitaph, day after, they're already calling it the gunfight at the OK Corral. Or, or, yeah. you know, they're yeah. already so it wasn't really Hollywood then? No, it was. Not just Hollywood. It, was, uh, it just, it, the the choice just a choice. The just the choice. The newspaper newspaper was the ones that called it Fremont Street and the Epitaph called it at the OK Corral. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the Hollywood ran with the OK Corral. Just that's sounded that's better. Yeah. And uh, it, yeah. a lot it's of people it's catchier. Yeah. You know, feel like they have to make it known that it didn't really happen there. Nobody says it actually happened at the OK Corral stables. Nobody says that. It's just the name it was given. Well, also, Once again, proximity. I feel. I yeah. feel like they would. Okay, Corral, because gunfight on Fremont Street. That's not very specific. Fremont kind Street is very far. Kind you of a, anywhere on Fremont. Sure, Street, it's a Fremont reference Street. point. The yeah, okay, yeah. Corral. There's only. It's here. So much. That's Absolutely. Just right here. That just narrows it down, and yeah, yeah, like you're saying, it's. They do the same thing even today. Mm -hmm. If something major happens, they're going to give you kind of a landmark. Sure. So right. for here, the landmark sure. for this area is going to be the Corral, even sure. though it was on Allen, and you had the back entrance. Right. But. You know, that's just a why reference point. In the show, we do reference the exact spot where it took place. Right. Yeah. It's it, and even more so too. It's it, the, the whole event was nothing like how Hollywood portrayed it to be. You know, with this grand. Even like you seen Tombstone, and they're all thirty feet apart. You know, Ike shooting out the flies window. Doc Holliday has a never-ending revolver. Uh, you know, like all of these <laughs> things. Yeah, like and and, and in, in reality, when it happened, <laughs> they were this close. Yeah. yeah, it's 30 rounds, 30 seconds. Well, once again, why was asked, how close were you to Frank McClower yeah. when the gunfight went down? He said, and I could have reached down and touched more, him. That's point so. blank rest. And if you're law officers apprehending suspects, you're not 30, 40, 50 feet apart. You are up close and personal. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they just so don't show that. They, yeah. they had the Cowboys backs against them, literally backs against the wall. They had the Cowboys were standing they in were a way cornered. that their backs yeah. were cornered in yeah. this small lot already filled with lumber and extra just garbage from the Harwood There's house. Two horses. Two horses, right. four Cowboys, and four herbs standing in this narrow yeah. lot. Well, and you look and at the, the Cowboys are all pressed up against the wall here, yeah. have four cops in front of them who are asking for their guns within this distance. Sure. And then all of a sudden, the Dog one crazy eight. one that's yeah. loaded on laudanum and alcohol yeah. cocks his hammers on the side of you three. Mm. Everyone's gonna get real itchy yeah. at that point when you're cornered. You know, yeah, did you? Well, if you look at the look at the gunfight site here, this black iron fence on the left hand side is about where the Harwood House was. Mm -hmm. Right. So it really was that narrow. It was in a tight, narrow alleyway. Yeah. And, and the lot was longer. Yes. So obviously yeah. The rest of the lot was vacant. Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. you like look that? at the back of City Hall, give or take, yeah. that's how deep the lots are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the alleyway would be about where the, our pathway is to go yeah. into the back. So and it was now. Once again, I think you guys, somebody mentioned there were six cowboys. Yeah. Wes mm -hmm. Fuller and yeah. Billy. Yeah. And but ran. Wes Fuller had ran right. before the herbs got there. Right. And then Wes Fuller, or not Wes Fuller, Billy Claiborne left right when they got right there. Right when yeah. they got there. So really it was six against four if they would have stuck around, but they took off. Then it became be roughly four on story. four, but Ike was an arm, so it was really four. <laughs> it's it's just three. like yeah. to say, James Earp was right down the street. And Another and thing they did, I saw an interesting um, um, documentary on TV not too far, that, long ago, yeah. but uh, it was so, interesting uh, for several reasons before. why the like, Earps in Holiday seemed to have the advantage. Uh, and that's because they, they came to the conclusion that the Earps and Holiday were better gunmen than the Cowboys. The Cowboys all stood straight like this, maybe by surprise, but they were firing straight on, whereas the Earps and Holiday all went sideways. Made the target smaller. Yeah. Made the target smaller. So they said they were better gunmen. The fact that Morgan gets shot through the shoulders, 
may have something to do with his stance uh, taking the bullet. Now, some people said Wyatt might have actually shot his own brother. Either way, certainly they were they were uh, sideways mm -hmm. with the guns out instead of squared up like this, like the Cowboys. Yeah. You know, and then the fact that I, in and of itself, ran through gunfire through smoke and, he really grab Wyatt. and grabs Wyatt begging to uh, and, but it, not only that but he grabs him and they tie up like this for a second the fact that in all of that chaos Wyatt didn't just even accidentally yeah. discharge and shoot him sure you know what I mean or somebody runs up to you in the middle of all this gunfire you yeah. don't know if he has a gun or not the fact that he could stand there coolly and tell him get to fighting or get away Mm -hmm. it, any kind of response at that point is insane. The amount of just well, it, 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 it didn't move. Well, yeah, Wyatt like, didn't move. He's the only one that really didn't move from his original that, spot. That's and of course, he was the that's only insane. participant in the gunfight that didn't get shot. Mm -hmm. He stood his ground. Apparently, he didn't move one step. He stood it's right in that, the spot when the gunfight started. Which is amazing. I think in a way that's kind of where Wyatt showed using one restraint. But also common sense because when the fighting started, Wyatt didn't see Ike with a gun. So when Wyatt or when Ike came to Wyatt, and basically he says, "Don't shoot, I'm unarmed." It's lucky, yeah, he didn't shoot. He's There's a lot of speculation that that's probably why Wyatt didn't get shot was because they'd be shooting Ike in the back, Maybe. his own boys. Um, so it was almost like Ike was protecting Wyatt. Yeah. Um, but also, Wyatt I think had a good sense that Ike was not armed. Because had Wyatt shot Ike coming at him, yeah, would have outcome, had a totally different outcome yeah. of the gun. Oh yeah, oh because yeah. Because he just shot an unarmed man. Yeah, yeah. and an and obviously see. unarmed man that you. Um, that so I think that kind of shows the calm, stoic yep. restraint of Wyatt mm -hmm. to know who to shoot, who not to. I mean, he must have just genuinely had zero fear. Like he just there's just there's no way you have any fear. All the you don't shoot at someone no. running at you. All yeah. the brothers no did agree because of how they were. Yeah, they just were right. fearless. It's insane. The doctors insane. didn't care. So yeah, he was. Right. Well, he, he was dying anyway. Life, he was his whole life to go doctor, and that got taken from him. Yeah, he was dying anyway. He was, yeah, he was wishing for it. Mm -hmm. he was, you know, that's, that's insane. Yeah, but I think also, of course. <laughs> Wanting to get, I mean, it's a it's a very well known fact that the Cowboys hated Doc, oh, yeah. and Doc hated the Cowboys, yeah. and no, I think yeah. he took this as an opportunity to let it the Cowboys have it. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he already had a <laughs> the reputation. Badges, the, yeah. He had a reputation just everywhere. You know, he made a reputation for himself out in Texas, and he had to run from the law because he he stabbed oh, someone in a yeah, bar fight. He repeatedly stabbed someone in a bar fight over gambling. And then on the run from Texas, he met up with Wyatt in Dodge City, where he was, where Wyatt was actually getting himself in shit and almost got himself killed. Yeah. And Doc supposedly kind of helped him in, like, basically getting him out of that situation. Well, Doc had a reputation of being really good as a pistolero, good with a gun. That's not necessarily true. Doc was very good with a knife. And yeah, they kind of yeah. show that in the movie Tombstone, which I love. But Doc did nothing to uh, stamp out that rumor that he was good with a gun. Of course, you can use that in your favor, but actually he was much better with a knife than a gun. And, it, it and uh, that kind of adds to maybe why. They, they said he was decent, Doc was decent with a gun right. when he was sober. But how often was he sober? So there's really nowhere to turn. And, and exactly. the thing is too, Doc also had a one-up, uh, if you ask me personally, Doc, uh, he had two guns, which was he was known to carry one two. One for each, yeah. Um, yeah. He carried Thunder his his thunder and his lightning, right. and the the lightning, I believe, the smaller one, was a double action. So mm -hmm. he already had a leg up having a double action pistol in mm -hmm. the world of single action. So sure. he he had no time to waste. Just yeah. click click done. And I mean, you know, very close he, range. he gets into town, he shoots Mel Joyce's finger off. Yeah. You know, he's already establishing That's that right. he's no one. Which is why he was with. banned from the Oriental. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, yep. you know, I mean, sure, no one might know if he's a good gunner or not, but I wouldn't bet my life on it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, he let his <laughs> reputation yeah, grow the day, you as really? being uh, uh, a gunman, a pistol arrow, yeah. and that certainly uh, uh, aided him in any situation that uh, there was going to be gunplay. People were afraid to take him on because yeah. of that reason. Whatever works, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Virgil, you know, when Doc wanted, you know, what's going on? What? What's going on? I hear those cowboys. You know, Virgil didn't want him to come. Virgil didn't care for Doc. Virgil pretty much viewed Doc as trouble. Because mm -hmm. he's a lawman. And good he thought, well, wait a sec. Maybe if I give him the 10 gauge that I just picked up from Wells Fargo 
And the fact that the Cowboys hate Doc and he hates the Cowboys, surely there'll be no trouble. It's only a misdemeanor. So, you know, yeah, I'll give you the 10 gauge Doc and there'll be no trouble. Well, that backfired. Yeah. The whole thing backfired because Doc was looking to shoot somebody. I think I think the idea that Virgil was having was to call the Cowboys bluff. Yeah. Like, you know, it might be easier for the Cowboy to bluff out, you know, Virgil. Sure. Out. Like, Virgil's not going to shoot me. Sure. If Doc's cold in the shotgun, they might be a little... A little less quick to pull their guns in. Absolutely. But then when Doc just shoots them anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, Doc had his own agenda. <laughs> and I, yeah. think, I think Vir that's a good way to state it, where yeah. Virgil is there before the gunfight to call, call their bluff. Yeah. Which, because if the Cowboys pull first, then it makes the fight justified. Absolutely. They were pulled, so okay, now gloves are off, no, and it's, yeah. it's self-defense. Mm -hmm. uh, some historians say Virgil should be, is the un unsung hero of that gunfight because he had good intentions. He had the correct intentions being a man of the law, and he really thought he was going to uh, have those cowboys uh, surrender their arms over. Mm -hmm. okay, and it, and, it, and it, it didn't go that way. It's but, obvious yeah. when you see the physical, just the physical side of it in general. You don't stand two feet cl close to somebody with an armed weapon that you know hates you if you don't expect them to fall. Sure. Like, you just don't do this, especially sure. as a career lawman. and you just, you're just you expecting yeah. them to give up. And Absolutely. that's kind of why this gunfight was such a big deal, because it never happened before. It, should, it when shouldn't you have got, happened. When, when an officer shouldn't have got happened. that close, you gave your gun up. That's that right. It. That For a misdemeanor? Yeah. When you throw in this, you, lost, yeah. you throw in Doc, he's borderline suffering from mania, probably. <laughs> sure. I'm sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? You throw that into the mix, and then you got rest of the Cowboys who it's, have it's, been getting their ass beat well, by yeah. Wyatt for like a week. Right. It's a and lot of tension there. Yeah. Yep. You know, you hear of other gun fights in Old West history, but it was that one that was, you would say, special that made it to the history book. And it mm. was also it was also one of the, the gun fights in one of the few, very few in gun, like gunfight history yeah. that was unwarranted. It yes, was yeah. it was not a duel. It mm -hmm. was not you disrespecting me, meet me out in the street with your yeah. gun. No. It was not it was just it was a happened. Political, socio economic coming to a head yep. between two different factions. And it came to a head. The outcome was violent, terrible. Uh, that was not the intention, but that's how it ended up. Mm -hmm. And, also and a statement was made. Yeah, we're yeah. wearing the badges. You're going to do what I say. They didn't. The rest is history. And well, Tombstone was, I mean, Tombstone was a big deal. Having control of Tombstone was. Yes. I mean, that was controlling the biggest city between here and St. Absolutely. Louis. Absolutely. There's a lot of issues. You know, uh, was, besides San Francisco, I think it was San Francisco here in St. Supposedly like uh, the, the big biggest thing. town uh, east of San Francisco and west of the Mississippi at yeah. that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in that, yeah, it was in Tombstone. Was a big it was a big deal. deal. The Cowboys ran it. Essentially, they did whatever yep. they wanted here. Yep. They, Making they huge stolen, profits. Yeah. And uh, and then all of a sudden the herbs came in. and Put their foot down. Yeah, and um, it, it really became to who. And that's essentially why the herbs got ran out of town. Because all the locals liked the cowboys. Yeah. And then the herbs made sure there were no more cowboys. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the cowboys were good for business. Like this. Yeah, yeah the movie because Wyatt was the last one to leave town. He left in April of 82 on his vendetta ride and never came back. Right. And actually he was wanted by the, it's by the local time, sure. police, right? For, uh, before, because of um, the vendetta yeah. ride, right? What he did on the vendetta I mean, ride. So he was a wanted man. man. That's why well, he couldn't and, return. And the reason why he kind of went on his vendetta ride was because when, after Morgan was killed, he went to try to get warrants out for the Cowboys. And the judge looked at him and said, basically point blank, why, you know if you apprehend him or bring him in, they're just gonna get a slap on the wrist and sure. be let go. He goes, if you want true dust, justice, you leave them in the bushes. Yeah. And that was from the judge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Perfect, man. That was fun. I appreciate it. Anytime. You guys are a wealth of knowledge on this stuff. I definitely appreciate your info. Of course. And uh, we'll see you again. Absolutely. Sounds good. All right, guys. So that was our look at the OK Corral. I want to give a big thanks to all the guys at the OK Corral. Uh, Todd, Dave, Nathan, Roman. Uh, all of them. They were such good guys to take some time out and actually talk to us about the history of the OK Corral and uh, things that probably a lot of people don't know. So I hope you uh, found the video enjoyable. And if you did, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Helps our content be seen by more people. And that really helps us out. So from Tombstone, until next time, everybody, see you down the road.